Okay, hi, I'm Jim Lewis. Um, I'm the developer of OSVVM, open source VHDL verification methodology. Um, okay, I also am IEEE um, VHDL working group chair, at least for now, until I can get some other person to help out with that. So, um, why OSVVM? Um, within the um, Wilson verification survey done by Siemens, um, OSVVM is VHDL's number one verification methodology. 28% use OSVVM worldwide. Um, and that's about, when you look at the languages used for verification, um, VHDL is about, 50, for FPGA it's about 56%, so that's roughly 50% of the VHDL users are using OSVVM at this point. Okay, so what is it? Um, like many things, it's a, it's, it has a verification framework in it. Um, it has a verification utility library because VHDL has gaps in it with respect to verification and this fills in those gaps. Um, it's a verification component library, so some free verification components like Axi, Axi Stream. Um, it's a script library. So we have a layer on top of tickle scripts to make it so we can run all simulators with the same set of scripts. Okay, it's a co-simulation capability right now. We have the capability to run C, C++ within a hardware simulator on the hardware. I'd like to see that grow to Python. So if anybody, I've seen a lot of Python presentations, it'd be exciting to um, bridge that gap. Um, and we've got a great test reporting capability, HTML for humans, um, the JUnit um, XML for continuous integration tools. It's free open source. Okay. So if we look at the verification framework then, it looks a lot like what System Verilog does um, or any other framework does. We have verification components that implement the interface signaling. And then we have a test sequencer that calls transactions to implement a test case. And then in VHDL, we have multiple architectures, so we have an architecture for each independent test case. Okay, so with verification components, we get concurrency, and that's a lot better than some of the approaches that just use procedures. Okay. The framework is simple. It plugs together just like RTL code. Um, so none of the nonsense of System Verilog with the OO to build a structural netlist. Yeah, that's, that's the hard way to do things. Um, so we have an instance of the dot, instance of our verification components, and then we have an instance of our sequencer. We do it in this order. Um, if you looked at VHDL 2008, it has external names which allow you to do hierarchical references. And with that, by putting our sequencer last, it can use a hierarchical reference in anything. By putting our verification components after our dot, they can reach into the dot. Okay. So another view of the same thing, um, our framework, we have transaction records um, that are, act as our interface. And then we have our transaction API, our call sequence that we use to set up our transactions, to set up operations on our interfaces. We have our verification components, and we have our test sequencer. All right, so if we look at the transaction interface, it's simply a record. What's special in there is the types that we use in the record have resolution functions that allow us to have multiple drivers on it. Okay, that sensibly and easily resolve things. Our long-term plan, though, is to switch to VHDL 2019 interfaces. We're just waiting for a few more vendors to pick up on that. But it's coming. It is coming along, so happy to note that. Our transaction API. All it does is it takes things into the record or takes things in from its interface and stuff them into the record to hand off to the verification component so at this point, we're agnostic to what interface we're working with. We're just feeding the verification component the information, and then we tell the verification component, hey, I got something for you. So we call this request transaction. This is a standard part of our library. And then when we get things back, 
we grab it and send it back on the interface to the calling procedures. Okay. So, in de again, independent of the verification component, we're putting stuff into our transaction interface, we're handshaking, and then we're getting the results. All right. So, the next thing we did is we took all of that and put it into a library because there's a number of interfaces that all do the same sort of thing. If you think of like address bus or memory mapped interfaces like Avalon or Axie, they're all doing the same thing. So the same transactions can be used to interact with those different interfaces. Okay, so we built this into the library as well as the transaction record there. And then we did the same thing for streaming sort of interfaces. So we have Ac these support Axie Stream, UART, and they do things like send and get. Okay. We also support burst operations. This is just a mini subset of what these interfaces do. Okay. So all of the verification components in the OSVVM library use this model independent transaction library. It simplifies writing verification components. There's less steps to do. It simplifies writing test cases. And if you use it yourself, we also support the C-based COSIM. Okay. And if we develop something for Python, it would also leverage this to connect to any of our verification components. All right. So if we look at a verification component, it has the verification the, inter, the dot interface on it. In this case, I encapsulated it into a record. For Axie, that makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of signals there and a number of them aren't used or aren't used by all interfaces. But we have to provide them all, so rather than having a lot of signals on the interface, we just have one and then we break it apart as needed. Okay. And then we have our transaction interface. All right. Building a simple verification component then, a simple blocking verification component, we would create a process with wait for transaction in it. This basically says wait until the transaction API sends me something with request transaction. When that happens, then we know there's something in the record for us to decode. We go decode that and do the appropriate actions on the interface. Okay. Now I'm kind of implying that I'm doing Axie here, but Axie really isn't this simple. It takes quite a bit more to do an Axie interface than just a simple blocking transaction. But it is a great place to start. Okay, so when I'm writing something, if I was developing something quick for a project, a basic blocking verification component is a great place to start, and it's just as easy as writing procedures. Okay. In fact, maybe easier for some, because we're already used to writing entities and architectures for RTL design. All right, if we look at our test sequencer, the main thing it has on its interface is these transactions, okay, these transaction records. Um, and then if we look at the test case itself, we've got the whole test case in the file, okay. Different, again, from System Verilog that kind of spreads out the test case where they're doing the constraints in separate places. Okay, so we like having a control process to initialize and finalize our tests. Um, we have one process per interface. That's my preferred way to write them. There are other ways within OSVVM even. Um, but I like writing them this way because we get the same sort of concurrency we get out of our design. It comes naturally from having separate processes. In there, we call transactions. This is what sets up our tests, makes it easy to write directed tests, makes it easy to layer in constrained random tests, um, scoreboards, functional coverage, all easy to do within this context. Then, though, because they're separate processes, we need to synchronize. All right, so we synchronize with wait for barrier. Um, this plays some fun and games with our resolution functions, but when one process gets here, it waits for the other or other processes to get there. Okay. And then when they've all gotten there, then they'll all release at the same time. All right. And we do the same sort for our ending. So we're using this test done signal as a flag to tell us when we're done with the test. And when they all agree we're done with the test, then the control process will get into its finalized stage. And one of the things that it'll do is call this end of test reports. 
This is what iterates our data structures to produce all the reports that we have. Okay. And during the test, we'll be checking for errors, and it'll be logging against one of our data structures. All right, so what this, this process looks like, um, basically we have some ID types. ID types are handles into OSVVM singleton data structures. Um, and in our test case then, we set up a test name. We might open a transcript file. This allows us to log everything that our test case is producing. Um, we might, if we're running interactively and debugging, we might turn transcript mirroring on, otherwise we want it off. Um, we, have to, we have to construct all of our data structures, so we call new ID, that's an OSVDM convention, to construct those. We might turn on some messaging to allow some of the things to print. And then this process stops until the test is done. Or, in this case, five milliseconds go by, and that works as our watchdog timer over the entire test case. A basic test case then, we might be sending some, th some things into the DUT and the DUT is maybe a switch and it's going to send a response out on another port so we'll send it in from a transmit side, get it from the receive side and then we can do a check against it. Okay, so that's doing the check locally in the test bench. Or instead of using a get transaction, we can use a check transaction which just says Here's what I'm expecting. You do the checking for the verification component. Okay. And that's going to produce a pass-fail message on each case here. Okay. And anytime we get an error, again, we're tabulating it in our data structure. Okay. So this improves readability. It makes writing self-checking tests pretty simple stuff. Okay. We do requirements tracking. It uses the same sort of capability that our alert logs do, except it used a different constructor function, and that constructor function denotes it as a requirement. Um, so that's really the only special thing. We check them the same way we check our alerts. So we do an affirm if to check it. We also have one special form of it where we're not going to create the ID. We're going to Earlier, we're going to create it directly here. That's because with some requirements, we're checking them off in exactly one spot, so there's no reason to have a disconnect between the creation of the ID and the checking of it. We'll just do it directly here. Okay. Note that the requirement is indeed a, um, an affirmation, and hence, and, and logs as an alert, so if it fails, it's also going to cause the test case to fail. All right, so when we wrap up our test case, um, we check, hey, did, did we time out? Did we just check the current time? Now is a VHDL built in. Um, we'll close our transcript. We could check the transcript right here. Um, OSVVM has a number of diff capabilities for files. And then these are all um, requirements checking that we might do at the end. We might have some requirement to say, oh, you did self-checking, you covered all of the functional coverage you had, and that the tests all passed. Okay. And then at the end, we'll do our end of test reports, do all our reporting. Sorry? Three minutes. Hmm. Okay. We're going to cut way short here. That was a short 20 minutes. Well, it's 15 for the talk and five for the questions. So if you don't have any questions. <laughs> OK. So um, we have a full constrained random capability. We have a full functional coverage capability. We have a scripting capability. Our scripting capability is built on top of um, Tickle. It's an API, so it's all procedure calls within Tickle. Um, and I think we're doing um, the scripting layering right. Um, we, we say library and the library name to create a library. And that creates it and activates it. And then we do analyze to compile. V analyze is VHDL's word for compile. 
And then we do simulate for simulate. Um, and that runs your simulation. Um, benefits, it's, it's simple, just like a list of files. Many people use a list of files. But with this, we get the power of tickle. We can't do it with VHDL and OSVVM with just a list of files because we have too many conditionals we need to work to thread our way around tool bugs. Okay. Um, settings like the current working library remembered, so you don't see us specifying the library name on the analyze and simulate commands like you do in your normal simulator scripts. And this works in basically every VHDL simulator out there at this point. All right. So we run it with that exact same scripts. Um, we do a bunch of reporting. Our basic reporting is here. Um, so, but when we run a group of tests, we'll give a mini report. And then we have a detailed HTML report. Our detailed HTML report gives the status. It gives links to um, the raw log file as well as an HTMLized version of it. Um, it gives our test suite summary. So we arbitrarily break our test case down into test suites, maybe based on the design feature that they're testing. And then we have test case summaries. The nice thing about breaking it down this way is when we get an error, we find out up top we have an error. We go down to the test suite summary, we find out which test suite failed, and then we quickly find which test case has failed. When you have, in OSVVM, we have seven, eight hundred some test cases. This makes finding those feasible when we break something. Okay, the, the log file is about 180,000 lines long. It's a little bit too, too much to scan. It's a little bit too much to want to be grepping and looking at things. Okay. We also do the same thing for test cases. Um, so this is what a, our test case summary looks like. This is the HTML version of that text table I showed you a minute ago. And this is our functional coverage reporting. This was actually inspired by the vendors because they looked at our old text-based reporting and they kicked us a lot. So we then went back and generated HTML for it instead. All right. This is, um, you can also, if you hate HTML um, tables, you can scan the report um, by looking at um, the HTMLized transcript. We factor out all errors and propagate them down outside of the step. But all triangles you've seen in my reports our HTML tags, you click them, they rotate down. When they rotate down, they show all the details. So it, it shows up something like this. And in the test case reports, we have a link into this so you can get to it quickly by just going to the test case first. OSVVM is on GitHub. You can grab it by cloning. It has um, submodules, so you've got to be recursive. You can also get a zip file um, on osvvm.org. All right. So one of the things about OSVVM is it really brings VHDL verification down to the level that I think any VHDL engineer can do it. That's one of the important things here. Um, okay. Wrapping up. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Go for it. It's here now. Wait, wait. So the question. Sorry. In, in tools, Xilinx has implemented. Um, wait, 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 Jim. Interfaces. Jim. What, what was the question again? Sorry. E ETA for VHDL 2019 in tools. Yes, and, and it's actually a really fun question because um, um, all that proactively implemented things quite a while ago. Um, Siemens sitted, sat thinking they weren't going to do it, I think. And Xilinx went and implemented their interfaces. So it's already in um, Xilinx tools, interfaces are. So that put them, Siemens, in a conundrum. <laughs> they did, in their July release this year, they have some things. So, yeah. Not bad for the Sorry? Not bad for the HDL, right? <laughs> <laughs> you you got to keep after the vendors to get them to, to implement things. Yeah. Friends. Related question. How well is this supported by uh, the open source simulators? Like, did, 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 
yeah, I, I was going to ask a similar thing. So the question is, how well is this? Well, what 2019 or the OSVVM? Yeah, so, so the question is how well is OSVVM supported by the current open source simulators? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they both, it works well in both, right. yeah. Okay, cool. And um, 2019 is supported by NVC, or, or at least it's coming in NVC. I don't think GHDL has started yet. Or I think they've started, but they don't, they have a roadmap. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Andre. Oh, I'm generally, I'm, I'm running on GitHub on the latest. Right, okay, great, thank you. So that, yeah. that's GHDL supporting OSVVM? Oh yeah, they've yeah. supported OSVVM for quite some time. Okay, cool. Yeah, you don't have to have the latest for that. That's been years now. Christian. Okay. Let's say I want to do distributed builds. Where, where do I set that up? Do I do that in OSVVM, in the Tinkle scripts, or outside? Well, so the question is, distributed builds for OSVVM yeah, in, the so tinkle, in the Tinkle scripts or outside? Some tests on one machine, other tests on machine B, more tests on machine C, more tests on machine D. So that everything so is faster, or I get the results earlier. Uh huh. Where where do I do that? Where do where do we control the running of sims on different machines? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if if I'm if I have a lot of machines to use, I'd partition up my my build my simulations into n sets where n is the number of computers I have available to me. Okay. And then you just start them all separately. Start separate builds. Right now our build automation isn't starting on multiple tools. I don't even know, I don't know that Tickle has that capability, but if it does, it's beyond me yet. <laughs> cool. All righty, let's leave it there. Thank you very much, Jim. Right. Nice work. <laughs>